Hello friends! Hope you guys recovered from the trauma induced by the last video. All those angles still haunt me in my dreams. Anyways now, with all the math out of the way, we can get back to coding. Today we will implement the world to screen function, a class for drawing and finally gain the power that comes with ESP. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasons attacks. Remember the look at vector from last video? We need that one for our world to screen function as well as its field of view angle and the aspect ratio. So let's fire up Cheat Engine and start searching. As I mentioned in the last part, if we look all the way up, the set value of the vector is 1, and if we look all the way down, it's minus 1. So let's do that and search for the fitting values. We end up with a few candidates. Let's take the first static one and hit browse this memory region. Here we change the display type to float. Looks quite promising. In fact, we are probably looking at the camera object. Right away, we can see values that look like multiple different vectors. And for whatever reason, the same values are stored multiple times. We do not need all of them. Let's just make sure that the values we are looking at are really the set value of the vector and are not part of some matrix. We see six values changing, so probably two 3D vectors. A matrix should have at least nine entries, more likely 16. So looks good. We also see the value 1.22, which does not seem to change. 1.22 in radians is pretty much 70 degrees. So this value could be the X field of view. We can test this suspicion by changing the zoom in game. And yes, if we zoom in with our pistol, we see that the value goes down, which is what we should expect. Great stuff. Now the only two values we still would like to get from the game memory is our screen width and height. But it does not seem like they are stored anywhere close. Let's grab a convenient address. This one right here for instance. Looks like starting at this location the world coordinates of the camera are stored. Followed by the field of view angle and then the look at vector. Just like in the first part we fire up reclass, plug our address in and start marking the things we found. So right at the start we have the location of the camera. A bit below we have the field of view angle. Followed by the look at vector and then another vector. We do not need it, but I'm pretty sure that one is the so-called up vector. After that vector, there's actually another vector, and it's the velocity of the camera. Notice how the values change when the camera moves and how they go back to zero as soon as the character and the camera stop moving. Whatever, let's not get sidetracked. Hit project, generate C++ code and copy that class. Over in our project. Let's create a new header file, name it camera and paste the code we just copied. We already created a vector class last time, so we can simply include it here. Now let's create a new class and name it camera EX, where EX stands for extended. What's so extended about it? Well, in here we create a member of type camera as well as the world to screen function. We still need the address for window width and height but we can already create variables for those. Now let's implement the world to screen function. It takes a 3D vector and returns a 3D vector. X and Y of the return vector will be our screen coordinates and the set will be the distance between the camera and the target. Because we only want to draw rectangles over our targets in case they are within a certain distance. Since I did already explain what the function does in the last video, I will just go over it really quickly. First we calculate the Y field of view angle. Then we calculate the vector between the camera and the object as well as the length of that vector. Then we normalize the vector, we rescale it to make it length 1. Next we calculate the jaw angle. Oh well crap, hang on a minute, it's not pronounced jaw is it? Somebody mentioned that. Let me look up how it's actually called. Yaw. Okay, it's pronounced yaw. Okay, fair enough. So. Next we calculate the yaw angle for the camera and the vector between the camera and the object. And then from those the relative yaw. Now, like I said, 
the yaw angle has the range from minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi, so we add or subtract 2 pi depending on the size of the given angle. Next we calculate the pitch angle again for the same vectors. And now we do all that rescaling for the relative angles. So first we divide by the field of view angle, then we add 1 and divide by 2. And last but not least, we multiply by the width for the x value and the height for the y value. And that's it. Next up, let's create the constructor for our camera EX class. We still need the address for width and height, so let's find that. This is a really simple task. We just look for one of the two values, change the resolution and look again. Quickly we find some good candidates. So let's grab one of them and head back to Visual Studio. Here we create variables for the pointer we just found and for the camera pointer we found earlier. Now inside the constructor we can cast our camera pointer to the one of them and get the width and height by dereferencing the other. For the width we add the 2 byte offset and we are done with this class. Do you still remember the plan from our first part? There is only one step left, which is draw the red and green rectangles onto our screen. To do this, let's create a new class called d3d9helper. Member variables are a pointer to the device, a pointer to the vtable pointer, a pointer to a font object and a pointer to a line object. We store these pointers because we do not want to create new line or font objects whenever we need to draw something. Next is the constructor. We do not init anything here. We will init stuff once we need it for the first time. So let's create a function for getting the vtable pointer. I will not explain again how this function works. If you still have not done so, go watch my video called internal hack menu linked above. We will use this class to draw both our simple menu as well as the entity's health and rectangle. First a draw text function taking the text, position and color as arguments. Inside we create a rectangle and set its top left to the position where we want the text to start. Then if the font does not already exist yet, we create it and afterwards we call its draw text method. Just for convenience sake I decided to overload this function. So now we have the options to pass a string instead of a const char pointer or pass the RGB values instead of the D3D color. Next we want to be able to draw a filled rectangle. We will use this one for the background of our menu. Arguments are x, y for the top left position, the width and height as well as its color. The way this one is done is kind of funny. It's just a very thick and juicy line having the width of the rectangle and the length being the height. So first we create two vertices with one point at the top but the middle of the rectangle in the x direction and the other one at the bottom and again the middle of the rectangle. If the line has not been yet initialized we do so, then we set its width and finally we draw. Only one more function needed which is the one drawing the rectangles without filling. Here we also need vertices, we basically go clockwise and draw lines. So first one is at the top left, next one at the top right, then the bottom right and next the bottom left and finally on the top left again. Again, if no line object has been created yet we do so, we set its width to 1. We could also make its parameter, but no need in this case. And finally we draw. Now it's time to do the drawing. Which as you know, yes at this point I assume you did watch my internal hack menu video is done inside the hook end scene function. Let's start with the menu since we draw that one no matter what. For this one we need the menu's location, width, height and color. So let's create some variables and set them to reasonable values. Here we also need some padding between the border of the menu and its text, as well as the height of each line of text. And we need the text itself as well. Here I create a vector containing those lines. We need an instance of our new helper class and since I'm lazy it's another global variable. In our main function we initialize its v table, if that init fails we exit. Then we hook the end scene passing the fitting v table entry. Inside the hook end scene we set the device pointer of our helper to the argument of the function. Then we draw the line for the background of our menu. I chose the color so that it fits the game color of the UI elements and made it somewhat transparent. 
Then we go through the lines of the text and we draw them at appropriate locations, which is the menu location plus padding plus the line height times the index. That's the menu done. Now we want to be able to turn the ESP on or off. To do so, we create a new bool. In our main loop, we change the value whenever numpad 0 gets pressed. And inside the hook end scene function, we check that value. If the value is true, we first load the entities. Then we go through those entities and check again if they are zero just to be safe. Now we have the lower of the two coordinates and convert them to the screen coordinates. If the distance between the entity and the camera is smaller than some cutoff value, we want to draw that rectangle. So now we convert the other coordinate we found. As it turns out, those coordinates are actually not the head, but somewhere in the middle between the head and the feet. So I call it torso. We want the height of the entity because that will be the height of the rectangle. So we get that by getting the difference between the feet and the middle, so the torso, and multiply it by 2. Now we can already draw the text displaying the health. Since the health is a float, we do some conversion. Instead of displaying a value between 0 and 1, we display an int in range of 0 to 100. Now we can draw that text. I want it to be somewhere on top of the entity. After some playing around, the location looks fine. Now we draw the rectangle. I chose the width of the rectangle to be half the height. So the bottom left is the feet's x value minus 1 half the width and the y value minus 1 half the height. But we still have a mystery to solve. We do not know yet when to draw a green or a red rectangle. Well, maybe you remember from the first part when we went through the entity list that we ignored 8 bytes between every entity pointer. It turns out that two of those bytes are something like a type ID. All the marines have the same value, all plants have the same value and so on. So I drew those IDs instead of the health and it turns out that the type ID of the marines is 3680. But now we need to get this information from memory. So we create a new class and call it entity EX. Yes, that's right, EX stands for extended. And the extension is of course the type ID. Inside we store the pointer to the entity as well as the type ID. And now we have to adjust the load entities function. So we get the type ID, which is stored two bytes before the entity pointer. And add that to the vector. Here we use in place back instead of pushback. Big thanks to Alien for teaching me about this option. I could recommend reading up on this method. Basically, it's a faster alternative because it constructs the vector element in the final memory location instead of constructing it somewhere else and then copying it into the right place. And since we're already here, let's add an additional condition for adding the entity. We only add it if its health value is greater than zero. Plants, lamps, weapon and all that other stuff we are not interested in are all stored in the entity list, but their health is zero. Let me show you what happens if I draw all of those. Yeah, that's no good. Now inside the hooked end scene function, we can set the color to green in case the type ID is that of a marine and keep it red otherwise. And that's it, we are finally done. That was easily my longest video yet. As always, thank you very much for watching, join the discord, subscribe for more hacking videos, until next time friends, talk to you soon.